Hi Taurus, welcome to your January 2022 Taroscope with me, Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Quick note, these readings are for your sun, moon and ascendant sign. So whether you're a sun, moon or rising sign, uh, Taurus, this is for you. And remember, you should always use your own discernment. Before we start, as always, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So, happy new year to you. I truly hope that 2022 is an amazing year for you. I really hope that it is a blessed one. You've got a fresh year here right ahead of you so remember to make it a great one remember to make it a good one you're starting the year with a fresh slate so give everyone and everything that you come into contact with that same fresh slate right start over this is a chance to do so and I think we can all agree that at this point of the last three years it really is time to move on and do something different and do something new so allow yourself and everybody that you come into contact with to start over all right for your actions and interactions with the world at large, you have the temperance card, right? So you're finding that inner equilibrium this month. This is, and you know what's really funny as well, right? I talked about giving people a fresh slate and stuff. This card is about alignment, right? And in a lot of ways, it asks you to temper your inner self with the outer external influences that you are experiencing. And what tends to happen is when we change something in here, the people, the faces, the energy that surrounds us has to change because it can't hold that vibration anymore. This is a chance for you really uh, to remove drama from your life, to let go of challenges or issues that might be holding you back or plaguing you in some way, shape or form. This could be a powerful time of uh, self-honesty as well, right? Getting really clear on what your goals are, but more importantly, what your intentions and your motives and your alignment is actually saying. What is it, you know, it's one thing that when we say, this is what I wanna manifest, or this is what I wanna create, or this is what I want to do. Does your energy, does your soul, do those things, does those aspects of you agree with the things that you say that you want? This is a time to really get into it with yourself and not on, you know, this isn't about beating yourself up or negative self-talk. This is just about really getting very clear on what you are aligned with on that spiritual and soul and energetic level because that's what's creating our reality at all moments of, of our experience, right? As much as sometimes I might not wish that were true, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it is for, for me as well. So I, I'm totally there with you. But this is a wonderful energy as well because it also suggests that you have the power and the ability that you need to create the changes and the shifts that you want, right? So in a way as well, for some of you, maybe you start a healing journey over the course of January, right? Maybe this is the time where you say, I'm gonna change my mind, I'm gonna change my body, I'm gonna change my diet, I'm gonna change my, um, you know, my outlook, my reactions. It's not gonna be hard, right? The process of alchemy is never easy, but it is worth it. That's how you get gold. For your money and materials, speaking of gold, you've got the two of pentacles. So this is really great. It looks like some of you are spending money on health related things this month, right? So this could be anything from a trip to a chiropractor, to a massage therapist. It could be uh, maybe that you're spending money on some sort of treatment for yourself. It's not necessarily because there's anything wrong, but this could be about enhancing yourself, enhancing your physical self. And the reason I say this, is because the temperance card has a lot to do with healing. That two of pentacles is what you're putting your money into, where where your resources are going and where a lot of your the portions of your resources are being diverted. <clears throat> What I also like about this for you as well, this suggests that you are looking at the money, you're looking at the resources, and you're trying to balance the figures, right? This is you trying to, again, balance the books. There's That's the message in both of these cards, right? Um, there's something in here as well about forgiveness. For somebody, I don't know who it is that needs to hear this, but it's like you're supposed to forgive, but you're also supposed to let go of it, right? So it's like once you've made the forgiveness, don't then remember it because whatever it is that you're viewing, it's it's almost like it's stopping you from experiencing something that you need to. Now, when it comes to finances, resources, and money, the Two of Pentacles is also about slow, steady growth and expansion. This is a time for you to think about that thing that you're trying to do or trying to get off the ground. 
Ask yourself, what is it going to cost and how far away is that goal at this moment in time? You need to take a really strong, solid look at what the distance between what it is that you want and where it is that you are now is uh, is showing up for you, all right? Um, but yeah, I like this for you. I think all in all, it's not bad at all. When it comes to your communications and conversations, you have the Queen of Wands. So she's not close, she's not next to the Temperance card, but the Temperance card is here. So I would wager that you might be dealing with a Sagittarius this month, some of you, um, a, or a fire sign woman. So this could be an Aries, a Leo, or a Sagittarius. This might be somebody that is helping you balance your books. Maybe this is an accountant. Maybe this is somebody that you're seeing around finances. Maybe you're uh, talking to a financial advisor, somebody that has the inside scoop on what it is that you need to know. Either way, they're helping you get something under wraps so that you can... I almost want to say like so you can set some clearer boundaries around your goals I kind of feel like it's like a lot of you have got this thing that you want to do and you know that it's there and it's kind of like that's that's where it stops it's like this person whoever she is or through some of your conversations you're going to start to define and refine the boundaries around those goals right when you start to really clearly define goals and you specify them and you give them dates and stuff they get a lot more potent right and our ability to meet them becomes a lot more potent what i will say to you with this uh, energy here as well because it's in your communications this might be a time where because it falls next to that two of pentacles you might have to set some boundaries with a partner with a child about money that's being spent money that's being going out um, you know, the holiday season is over, January is here, January's, uh, January's full moon is called the Long Night's Moon. Um, and there's a reason for that, right? Uh, so this could be a time where maybe getting the finances in check and having to have a conversation to say, maybe, look, you know, you're spending too much money or um, we need to be able to cover this. Like there's a, a sense here that you're having to really tighten the belt. And I don't think it's just because it's January. I think it's because also you've got this goal and it's gonna require every every extra penny that you, you've got, right? So there's something that you're working on bringing into actuality that is gonna require a lot more discipline when it comes to the communi uh, when it comes to the finances. Now, the other thing is with the Queen of Wands, this is dynamic, it's energetic, it's fiery, it's passionate. So there could be a lot of really interesting conversations that get you really excited about stuff, that get you really fired up and motivated, which is great. Um, I wouldn't be surprised as well if some of you maybe sought out a business coach uh, of some kind for your communicate uh, your heart and half you've got the judgment card right so for those of you that are single it does look like a person is reaching out except expect the i miss you text the hey how you doing how, how's how's you how's it been going you know all of that oh, i'm just like block delete bye um, <laughs> if you're me you can do that um I will say that it does look like some of you are reconnecting with somebody. Now, for some of you, this could be an ex. For some of you, this could be an old friend, an old colleague. Somebody that you were really close to could be coming back into your world over the course of this month. And i got to be honest with you, that judgment card suggests that they are likely to be here to stay. Um, I don't know why, like usually I say to people, when you reconnect with someone, it's not always meant to be a reconnection. Sometimes it's just meant to be a... Um, what's the word? Sometimes it's just meant to be, you, you know, they come up, they show you what you've healed, what you've learned, and you move on. But this feels like this person is here to stay in some way, shape, or form. So for those of you that are single, if you're open to it, it's very possible. For those of you that are partnered, married, or in long-term commitments, this could be something uh, that you and your partner have talked about previously, something that you wanted to do, something that you were both really passionate about, really fired up about. And it's like you're wanting to do this, but you've had to put it back so many times that maybe you both wondered, well, you know, it hasn't happened for us yet. So then maybe there's a reason, right? Maybe we're not supposed to do this. I just think it's just been delay after delay after delay, but I feel like that's gonna, but that delay or that barrier will be removed this month. And when it does happen, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. So it could be really nice. Um, now, for all of you, single or partnered, 
there is something here that suggests an old friend, an old colleague, an old, you know, an old acquaintance, maybe an old friend that both of you used to hang around with or an old couple that you used to hang around with are coming back into your lives and it looks like they're here to stay this time. So if there were any challenges or issues or kinks, you've got to find a way to iron them out. For your first week of the month, you have the Emperor card with the Temperance card. This is your own inner and spiritual authority, right? This is about you really coming into that essence of a discerning spirit, um, which really speaks to me about this first week of January being very much about the emotions and the spirituality. This is you fortifying your inner world in some way, shape or form. Um, it also suggests as well that some of you could be seeing a healthcare professional in the first or second week of the month. There's something about health that's coming up for you lot and I don't feel like it's a detriment but I do feel like it's prominent. Maybe this is that you, you know, you, you've said to yourself, right, this is the year I'm gonna really improve my health. And it's like, true to your word, you're going in like a Taurus, right? Straight in, we're gonna do this. Um, and I love it, I think it's great. This is a lot of dynamic energy and it's like, the thing that I see you balancing, and here's where this gets really interesting, right? So you've got the Temperance card there doing this balance thing. Look at the King, the Emperor in this right the things that i think you're balancing i feel like you're in this process of strengthening the body so that it can catch up with the spirit right and when the body is strong fit and healthy our gifts tend to magnify whatever those might be for your second week of the month you've got the justice card um hold off on signing any contracts of a financial nature in this second week if you can um it might be that you can't get round it, right? And we can't stop living just because Mercury decides to go retrograde because I call Mercury the retrograde hoe. Uh, you know, always going retrograde. <laughs> um, you've got the Justice card with the Two of Pentacles, which does suggest a financial commitment um, is going ahead in some way. It looks like a, something that you're purchasing, buying or needing to buy. You got this right next to the emperor which means that it is going to be legally binding so there's something here that you're having to do on a financial level um if this is something like a really good deal that pops up and you think it's too good to pass up go for it just be sure to check the fine print or what i like to do in a mercury retrograde or around that time because remember venus your ruler is also retrograde technically not such a bad thing for you because she's in a fellow air sign so she's poor um, a fellow earth sign sorry uh, she's pouring harmonious energy into your sign right so even though it's your ruler and it's retrograde and she's in capricorn um it's still not as bad as it could be for a lot of people. So whether this is your sun, moon or ascendant that you're watching for, it's an energy that you can kind of work with. Um, and I, so I like this for that reason. What I tend to do in a Mercury retrograde, if I've got something important that I need to do or that I need to sign or that I need to look at and I can't get out of, uh, out of doing it, I'll give it to somebody that's not attached to it at all, right? Somebody that I trust, obviously and then I'll get them to look over it because it tends to be that when we're in it, we can't see it, which is one of the reasons getting someone else to do your proofread is a good idea, all right? So just keep that in mind. When it comes to your third week of the month, you've got the Empress. So this is your card, or this is the Lady Venus. So Venus is blessing a lot of people this month, right? So she came up in the Aries reading uh, with a person. She's come up in the Taurus reading with a person. So this is a fire sign woman who is lively, bubbly, fun, sensual, dynamic. This is someone that's really feisty, fired up, but because they come up through the guise of the Empress, this is a person that knows how to do the material stuff really, really well. And this is likely to be somebody that is, um, you know, if this is someone that you're meeting on a personal level, whether it's a king or a queen of wands, let's say, um, this is very likely to be somebody that is easy on the eyes, right? Anyone that shows up with the Empress, a court card with the Empress, it tends to be someone that's really pretty, really beautiful, really handsome, um, all of that. But I kind of feel like they know their stuff whether this is a personal trainer, whether it's a coach, whether it's a doctor, like whoever this person is, they know their stuff. And what I like about them as well is like, they come up through the Empress, so it's not like they know their stuff and they're just stuffy, like they're really, they look like really fun, really bold, really edgy. And then you've got the Moon card for the fourth week of the month. So there's definitely some talk here 
around new, uh, people coming back because the moon path, the moon past, the moon card is the past, right? And it's very often foggy and nebulous. Be careful if there is an ex of some sort coming in. Be careful if there is an old friend or uh, you know colleague, etc. I'm not saying that uh, you know that they're a bad person or anything like that, but just go slowly with it, right? Like I said, it feels like they're going to be around for a while anyway. So if that is the case, take a while to vet them, right? What have you learned? How have you changed? How are you different? You know, you're talking the talk about how different you are and how you've evolved and all the rest of it. Show me, all right? Don't just tell me, show me. Um, and then for your new moon, so you've got new moon on the 2nd of January, you have the gate 54 and ambition. This really is about charging ahead, right? It really, ambition, you've got the horse there. Um, this new moon, especially because it's again offering a trine energy to you, it's going to show you where you really are ready for more, where you're ready for more of everything, more business, more fun, more life, more sex, more sensuality, more connection, more freedom, more personal authority, like wherever it is that you are ready for more, that new moon is going to highlight it to you. So if you, if around that, the 2nd of January you feel really drawn to something like really like you get that really strong urge that's your soul telling you this is what we want more of right for your full moon message you've got the gate 55 and abundance look at that that's gorgeous right and it really does represent abundance but this card is also about trusting that the abundance that you want need and desire is on its way to you this is a, a time where Alignment, right? So this full moon is really going to highlight to you if you're in alignment with that abundance energy, if you really are trusting in the universe, if you really are asking for those things, this full moon is likely to either bring it to you or it will reveal the path that you need to take in order to make it happen, right? So this could also be a time of really powerful self-honesty where you're kind of like, ooh, so I'm not actually in alignment. I got a lot of doubt about, you know, wanting to be a millionaire or I got a lot of doubt around, you know, wanting that epic love in my life. <coughs> Excuse me. This full moon in Cancer is really going to highlight to you what you do and what you don't believe, what you do and don't trust the universe to, to provide for you or is that the universe is going to provide for you. That full moon is going to be one of honesty, for real, for real. All right, with that said, I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Have a fantastic January. Welcome to the new year. Thank you so much for all of your support. Take care and I'll see you soon.